Come and sit by the fire, right here. On this side of the fire, not too close. We don't want you burning. This is a real fire. Come on this way. Right over here. Have a seat. Not behind the fire, this way, over here. Perfect. All righty. out of the leaves and dug around until she uncovered a great big hairy toe. There was some good meat on that toe which would make a really tasty dinner. So the old woman put it in her basket and took it home. When she got back to the cottage the old woman boiled up a kettle full of hairy toe soup which she ate for dinner that night. It was the best meal she had in weeks. Yeah. The old woman went to bed that night with a full stomach and a big smile. Ew. Along about midnight, a large black cloud came creeping over the moon, and from the woods, a hollow voice rumbled, Harry Toe! Harry Toe! I want my Harry Toe! Inside the house, the old woman stirred uneasily in her bed and nervously pulled the covers up to her ears. From the woods, there came a stomp, stomp, stomping noise as the wind whistled and jerked at the treetops. In the clearing at the edge of the forest, a hollow voice said, Harry Toe, Harry Toe, I want my Harry Toe. The old woman shuddered and turned over in her sleep. A stomp, stomp, stomping sound came from the garden path outside the cottage. The night creature shivered at the burrows as a hollow voice yelled, Harry Toe, Harry Toe, I want my Harry Toe. Inside the house, the old woman snapped awake. Her whole body shook with fright as she listened to the angry howling in the garden. Jumping out of bed, she ran to the door and barred it. Once the cottage was secure, she lay back and down to sleep. Suddenly, the front door of the cottage burst open with a bang, snapping the bar in two and sending it flying into the corners of the room. There came the stomp, stomp. Stomping noise of giant feet walking up the stairs. Peeping out from under the covers, the old woman saw a massive figure filling up her doorway. It said, Harry Toe! Harry Toe! I want my Harry Toe! The old woman sat bolt upright in terror and shouted, I ate your Harry Toe! Yes, you did, the giant figure said very gently as it advanced into the room. No one living in the region ever saw the old woman again. The only clue to her disappearance was a giant footprint a neighbor found pressed deep into the loose soil in the meadow behind the house. The footprint was missing. The big toe. around your neck, Jane. He'd ask her every day, but she wouldn't tell him. Still, in spite of this aggrava aggravation, Johnny thought she was cute. He asked her to the soda shop for an ice cream sundae. Then he asked her to watch him play in the football game. Then he started seeing her home, and come in the spring, he asked her to the dance. 
Jane always said yes when he asked her out. She always wore a yellow dress to match the ribbon around her neck. It finally occurred to Johnny that he and Jane were going steady, and he still didn't know why she wore that yellow ribbon around her neck. So he asked her about it yet again, and yet again she did not tell him. Maybe someday I'll tell you about it, she replied. Someday. That answer annoyed Johnny, but he shrugged it off because Jane was so cute and fun to be with. Well, time flew past as it has the habit of doing, and one day Johnny proposed to Jane and was accepted. They planned a big wedding, and Jane hinted that she might tell him about the yellow ribbon around her neck on the wedding day. But somehow, what with the preparations and his beautiful bride, and the lovely reception, Johnny never got to, around to asking Jenny about it, Jane about it. And when he did remember, she got a bit teary-eyed and said, We're so happy together. What difference does it make? And Johnny decided she was right. Johnny and Jane raised a family of four, and the usual ups and downs, laughter and tears. When their golden anniversary rolled around, Johnny once again asked Jane about the yellow ribbon around her neck. It was the first time she brought, he'd brought it up since the week after the wedding. Whenever the children asked him about it, he always hushed them, and somehow none of the kids had dared to ask their mother. Jane gave Johnny a sad look and said, Johnny, You've waited this long, you can wait a while longer. And Johnny agreed. It was not until Jane was on her deathbed a year later that Johnny, seeing his last chance slip away, asked Jane one final time about the yellow ribbon she wore around her neck. She shook her head a bit at his persistence and then said with a smile, Okay, Johnny, you can go ahead and untie it. With shaking hands, Johnny fumbled for the knot and untied the yellow ribbon around his wife's neck and her head fell off. Ah! Oh my God. You guys want one more story? Yeah! Alright. Let's see. Decided to make a new scarecrow. Being creative, we gathered our supplies and got to work. This scarecrow was to be different. This was my special design. I wanted a creepy scarecrow, much scarier than the others. Hours later, we finished up. Indeed, it was the ugliest, most frightening scarecrow I'd ever seen. I was so proud. Mom called us for supper, so we planted the scarecrow out in the cornfield, where I could see it from my bedroom window. Not giving it any more thought, we went in and ate. Soon, the wind picked up, and it began lightning. No storm was forecasted, but it looked like we were in for a rough night. Light rain began to fall as I went to bed. I was worried about my new scarecrow, so I peeked out my window. What I saw shocked me. He was there all right, but not where we had placed him. It appeared to me that he, had, he was several feet to the right. Puzzled, I stood at the window and watched intently. The lightning was bright, and every time it flashed, I could see my scarecrow. The problem was, it looked as if he was moving when the sky was dark, only to turn up in another spot when the sky lit up. Thinking that I must be imagining things, I put my pajamas on and went to bed. Later on, a loud crack of thunder woke me up. By now, the rain was pounding down, making it difficult to see out my window. I slipped on my shoes and stuck outside to check on my scarecrow. Not sure where he was, I walked around the thunderstorm, half blinded by the cold, stinging rain. Clumsily, I stepped, stumbled over a fallen branch, and fell down a patch of mud. I looked up. There was my scarecrow, glaring down at me. His eyes were huge and glowing red. I couldn't pick myself up fast enough. I was screaming to the house and never looked back. After tossing and turning the rest of the night, I woke up to bright sunshine and the smell of bacon. Wanting to tell my parents what had happened, I sat quietly and ate breakfast. Anxious and apprehensive, I then went outside to look around. My dad was already looking for damage to the buildings, but I was looking for my scarecrow. I could see the other scarecrows, all in their usual places, but my scarecrow was nowhere to be found. Full of confusion, I began crying. Not because of losing the scarecrow, but because of pure, unadulterated fear. My father told me he probably blew away and would be discovered in a field during harvest. 
but I knew better. Somehow, some way, that scarecrow came alive. All right. On the count of three, we're going to blow out the fire. One, two, three.